A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord God, cry out full-throated and unsparingly, lift up your voice like a trumpet blast, tell my people their wickedness and the house of Jacob their sins. They seek me day after day and desire to know my ways, like a nation that has done what is just and not abandoned the law of their God. They ask me to declare what is due them, pleased to gain access to God. Why do we fast and you do not see it? Afflict ourselves and you take no note of it. Lo, on your fast day you carry out your own pursuits and drive all your laborers. Yes, your fast ends in quarreling and fighting, striking with wicked claw. Would that today you might fast so as to make your voice heard on high. Is this the manner of fasting I wish, of keeping a day of penance? That a man bow his head like a reed and line sackcloth and ashes? Do you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? This, rather, is a fasting that I wish, releasing those bound unjustly, untying the thongs of the yoke, setting free the oppressed, breaking every yoke, sharing your bread with the hungry, sheltering the oppressed and the homeless, clothing the naked when you see them, and not turning your back on your own. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your wound shall quickly be healed. Your vindication shall go before you, and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. Verbum Domini A heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my offense and my sin is before me always. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. For you are not pleased with sacrifices. Should I offer a burnt offering, you would not accept it. My sacrifice, O God, is a contrite spirit, a heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. Dominus vobiscum. Et cum spiritu tuo. Lexio sancti evangelii secundu Mateum. Gloria ti et homine. The disciples of John approached Jesus and said, Why? Do we and the Pharisees fast much, but your disciples 
do not fast. Jesus answered them, Can the wedding guests mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. Red room In any of our pursuits, whether they be athletic or academic, we always have a purpose, a goal in mind, a reason for doing something. And when we have this reason, we have this goal, we, we are moved and we are, um, are, are moved to, to, to a good performance, you know, to, to excel in whatever we do because of the goal we have in mind. Well, the church calls us during this Lenten season to do prayer and fasting and, and almsgiving. But sometimes we can forget why we're doing this or consider it as just an obligation, one of those things that I have to do. But really our purpose for this is to grow in faith, hope, and charity. That's our goal. That, that's what is to drive us, is to help us conform ourselves to Jesus Christ the Lord to grow in his likeness. Today in the, in the book of Isaiah, uh, they, they are questioning, they're questioning God, saying, well, uh, why do we have to fast? You know, what, what is, uh, oh, and, and, then, and then we fast and, and we don't see any results. You know, we flicked ourselves and, and God, it seems like you, you don't care, you don't take no note of it. Well, first and foremost, see, here's the people that have taken their eye, taken their minds off the goal, off the purpose of fasting. Their intentions are all wrong also. Oh, here, that now they're, they're thinking of only what's in it for me. Or it's, it's, it's now become for them just a, an obligation. We got to do this. What's the results? What's, what's the reward now? Give it to me. It should come to me. And then uh, they go on to say, um, uh, the prophet goes on to say here that your fastens and quarreling and fighting and striking with wicked claw, um, you know, you, you, and you want to be heard on high, but yet you're, you're mean to each other. You're, you're, you know, you're, you're quarreling amongst each other. You're, you're not nice. Well, we have to look at our intention for fasting. When we uh, when we see in, in, John, in, in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus is explaining, uh, um, is saying that we shouldn't uh, fast like the hypocrites, you know, like the Pharisees who are, who are fasting like hypocrites. They, they fast to be seen. They have another motive besides growing in, in holiness. Our, our intention, again, ultimately for fasting is to become like Christ. Um, you know, when, when we speak about growing in faith, uh, hope, and charity, you know, we, want, we fast to, to, of course, control ourselves, to, to put ourselves, to master ourselves, to, to calm the senses down, um, to uh, uh, make sure that, that, you know, what our desires, our urges can, can be tamed. And, but, but fasting also uh, builds up faith. And, and how so? Well, at the times of our fasting, we should, we should do something to nourish ourselves spiritually. Um, that like if, uh, if say, we're, we're, we're forgoing a meal, uh, we, sh we should use that time to pray uh, or, or, uh, or to read some scriptures or to perhaps go to uh, adoration or something like that, you know, or praying the rosary, doing, doing something. And in, in fasting, we have to believe God that he's going to give us the strength, the grace to be able to do the fast. You know, it's, it's never easy to fast. It, it's hard. It's hard to abstain. You know, uh, you know sometimes when, when we're trying to abstain and, and fast, all of a sudden that's when, when the food becomes most tempting. 
You know, we, we, uh, the church says, okay, you abstain from meat on Fridays, and, uh, and, and now all of a sudden, you know, we're, we're craving steak, you know, or, or a nice uh, juicy hamburger. You know, that always happens. <laughs> it says, oh my gosh, you know, I, I, I wasn't craving a hamburger all week, but today's Friday, and now I want to, I want to go down to McDonald's or Burger King or something and, you know, go to the steakhouse. But, you, you know, we're not craving that during the week, but only on, on, on Friday, you know. So, so then it, it, this urges us uh, toward greater faith, because now we have, to, we have to bring it to the Lord. And it says, Lord, I was not, was not tempted during the week, but now I'm tempted, God. Give me the grace. Uh, uh, give me the strength to fast. And God gives us the strength to fast. He gives us the grace. And so what happens? Well, we're growing in faith because we're now growing in dependence of God. We're becoming more attached to him and less attached to the things of the world. And again, as far as, uh, as fasting, as I was uh, mentioning the other day, is that we don't uh, want to kill ourselves in our fast either where we, we, we get so grouchy and, and wicked with each other. Uh, th this is this is also going on right here as well is that they're they're too strict with themselves There's you know, there, there's there's some of us out there who who work, you know working construction working uh, uh, very um, hard and intense uh, labor uh, Occupations and you know, we need to be able to think well we need we need energy You know, the, of course you, you could abstain with me from meat, you know, that's that's not hard to do But there's but you could eat still but there's other kinds of fast you can do one thing uh, as far as quieting ourselves down, quieting the senses down so that we're not always so, so uh, have so much urge to or, or cravings to, to sin is, is, to, is to incorporate a little silence in our lives. There's a lot of noise out there you know, uh, everywhere we go. You know, we, we always have to be entertained. You know, every time we, we get in the car, hey, here comes uh, the radio. Now we, you got your Bluetooth devices. You can you can listen to your music. The Bluetooth goes on automatically and all that. You got all your favorite songs or, or audio books or whatever. And, and then, uh, you know, you go home and, and well, you, you know, you got you to watch the TV. Or, you, you know, you're just, uh, you're just hanging around. There's no TV around. But in the end, you, you're watching TV in your, in your uh, uh, iPod or, or your uh, iPhone or, or smartphone or whatever. You know, so it's, there's always something, you know, especially, especially these days. Well... Sometimes we've got to fast from these things, quiet us down, quiet us down, you know, from, from what we're seeing and from what we're hearing at times. Have a little silence. And if silence is hard, you know, if, if it's going to drive us mad and all that, just do it for a few minutes. A few minutes every, every day, maybe two or three times a day. It says, I'm going to develop some silence because we've got we to gotta work up, we've got to build up. We can't expect ourselves to have these overnight results. We've got we to gotta work up toward uh, a goal. And, and, you know, silence ultimately... Is, is where we hear the, the voice of God the loudest, in silence. You know, God often speaks to us in, in silence. The, the Psalms say, be still and know that I am God. You know, being still, being quiet for a few minutes. And it's, a time to, it's also a time to give us rest, to calm down, and to give the, the anxieties and the troubles of the day to the Lord. You know, just to stop for a few minutes. And sometimes some of us are, are also driven towards a lot of anger. Well, sometimes we need to have a little silence in our lives. We need to stop, you know, be still, be still and, and focus on the Lord. So this is a good way to fast. And, you know, saints like, uh, like St. Therese tell us to do little, little fast, you know, and thing, things, uh, you know, things that are, that are manageable, things, things that we can, we can do, just little things. Uh, one one um, Father John Paul uh, encourages people to, um, uh, to not put the, press the snooze button in the morning, you know, that, that's, that's one of the hardest things to do, try it, <laughs> you know, but anyway, fasting, uh, though, again, it should be producing for us faith, hope, and love, okay, that, and, and, the, and, and as we're growing in faith, we grow in hope, we, 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 can, we can now see, we're starting to receive with the eyes of God, we're growing in the Lord, um, we, we can hope for, for greater things, and we, we, can, we can have, uh, we have more faith, and believe God that God is going to accomplish things. We we start to to um, have more hope in the things of God. Of uh, of yeah, you know, it, well, what is the, the word of God going to do for me? We hope in, in in the grace of God that's going to come upon me. We start to anticipate or start to expect things from the Lord. And and things may if if we weren't fasting, if we weren't taming ourselves, we may not be excited about. 
we may not want to anticipate and, and, uh, and be an expectation for, like the grace of God. But if we're, if we're caught up on all the noise in the world and just our own cravings and all that, we forget about these things. We forget about the grace we receive, about hearing God's voice when we come to Mass, you know, about what, what the Lord has to say to me. Because we're, we're so occupied with so much. But, but fasting calms us down. It helps us to hope in the things of God. Because in hoping in the things of God is, and then we, we get our true nourishment. You know, my food, my food is to do the will of God and accomplish his work, as Jesus says. We begin to hunger and thirst more for, for righteousness. So hope, it gives us hope. And ultimately, what, what fasting should do for us is, is bring us into a greater amount of charity and love for one another. Uh, th this is why Isaiah says here is that, hey, your, your fasting should be pr producing charitable works. You know, that, that's, that's what he's saying here, that, uh, that you're, you're, you, know, you should be out there feeding the hungry and, and, uh, and sheltering the homeless and seeing the needs, basically, of your brothers and sisters. Okay? Fasting, you know, takes, takes the eyes off ourselves, our, our attention off ourselves, puts our attention on God. And, and to think like God. And if we're thinking like God, we are conscious of, the th uh, of, of what the needs of our neighbor are. We're, we're able to, our, our service of God improves. We can start to see the Lord in our brother and sister. See, th this, is, this is really the goal of fasting, is that we, we come into greater love. And today, Jesus is, uh, is addressing a question by the disciples of John. And, and Jesus got through saying that, I desire mercy and not sacri uh, sacrifice. Oh, that, that I desire mercy. That in, in, in the sacrifices, greater mercy should be coming forth from us. You know, Jesus shows us a lot of mercy. You know, there, there are, uh, he's also saying here that there are times and, and seasons for, for fasting. We, we hear uh, today, it says that, well, you know, how, they're, they're saying, how come you're, you're your disciples don't fast much and all that like the others. You know, uh, um, the church gives us particular times, particular seasons for fastings. Um, uh, like this is the Lenten season. We, we fast during this Lenten season, of course, to grow in faith, hope, and charity, but to conform ourselves to the suffering Christ. And in the, in, in the suffering Christ, you know, shows us great love in these sufferings. You know, because he's suffering for love of all of us. He's coming not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And see, this is the love that we got to take on. This is, this is the time to do it, a special time, a special season. You know, yes, and, and, and it is like a dying, a dying to ourselves, a dying to, uh, to our selfishness, uh, to, um, to whatever uh, moves us towards sin. You know, the, it, this, is, this is when we calm it down so we can, and, and, and it's a suffering, you know, it's, uh, we, it's a sacrifice but we're doing it for love of Jesus Christ so we can be more like Christ, so we can, we can operate in his ways through the power of the Holy Spirit. And then at, in, in, in Easter time, we receive the grace of the resurrection. So this is the season for fasting. Jesus is telling them this, this, that this is the season for fasting. I'm here with you guys. This is not the season for fasting. That's what he's saying. I'm here with you. It's not the season for fasting. This is the season for, this particular one is for a season for joy. They're, that's why they're not fasting. Okay. Um, but... Uh, uh, th this is the season for them to, to, to take it in, to sit at his feet. You know, he's, he mentions the bride and the bridegroom. And the reason he's saying that is that, you know, in, in Jewish customs, that when, when two got married right after their wedding, they, they were uh, um, dispensed from fasting for, you know, a, a week or so during the honeymoon time. You know, they, 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 they didn't have to do it. They weren't required. You know, and then, you know, not, I mean, hardly any couple would, would, uh, would abstain right after they get married and go to the honeymoon. That's just, I mean, maybe there's some that don't do, but you know, not many do. So, you know, this is what he's saying. He says, this is the time when God comes and, 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 and dwells with man. It, it's, he shows him his love and, and he's saying, in a few verses later, he's saying, come to me and learn from me, for I'm meek and humble of heart. Come, come and, and, and be with me. So there are certain seasons for fasting. This is our season for fasting here. That, that, that this was not the appropriate time, but the church has said that this particular time, this Lent is an appropriate time for fasting. And of course, again, we fast so that we can have an increase of faith, hope, and charity. This is the goal. 
This is the goal that we conform ourselves to the image of Jesus Christ, the Lord. You know, long uh, uh, ago, um, uh, you know, when, when we saw after the disciples, after Pentecost, you know, there, there was a very active laity uh, there. Um, the, not just the, the apostles or the presbyters, but, but the lay people, they were very active in, in evangelization and in, uh, in spreading the word of God and being good examples and in, in sharing their, their, their goods with people. And then for, for some reason, it, it just kind of, kind of faded away. You know? and, then, and then like even, even going into right before the Second Vatican Council, it was like um, this understanding of, of, of the, lay, the, the laity, their purpose is to pray, pay, and obey. You know, that, that, it's more than that, okay? And, and the Vatican Council stressed this. And this was always the teaching of the churches. They, they said, hey, you know, it's not just about pray, paying, and obey, but about being a light, being a witness, showing the love of the Lord in all of society. That, yeah, you still, we're still required to pray, pay, and obey, but there should, there, this should be fruitful. You know, we're doing it to grow in faith, hope, and charity. There's a reason, there's an intention to grow in love, and ultimately to, to bring it out to the world, to be Christ's presence. This is, this is why, and, the, and this is the call for all of us who are listening out there, to be the presence of Jesus Christ. So in our fasting today, in, in our uh, uh, abstaining today, remember the goal, remember the purpose is to become like Christ, to become like Jesus, to, to grow in his love, to grow in the love of Jesus, the Jesus who has first loved us, who died for us. Praise be to God.